Uh, this next one I think is really cool and, and um, uh, maybe underused, I don't know. The Apex Air package is really helpful uh, for allowing us to uh, present uh, errors back up to the user, uh, propagate errors to the user and kind of let the framework know that something went wrong. And what's really cool about this is one error translates to one validation message. So what we're going to do is we're actually gonna define a, a procedure or rather a procedure has already been defined um, that is going to allow us uh, to validate on our page and kind of still play nice with the Apex framework. The other thing that I just wanna say, the reason why I like doing things like this is that I, don't get me wrong, I love the air handling function. I, and we're gonna talk about it here in just a second. But um, you shouldn't rely on the air handling function for all of your messages. Uh, and the reason why I say this is because it can create a bad user experience. Uh, it's better than the user just seeing some um, uh, ugly air directly out of the database, right? We wanna try to soften that air for them. Um, but the only reason the error handling function is going to generate that error is if the constraint violation already happened or if the uh, error was already raised. And what that means is that it can only really show one error at a time. So if the data that was entered has three or four errors in it and we're relying on the error handling function to catch those for us, the user is going to click the submit button multiple times and each time they're only going to get a little piece of their problems. So that's a bad user experience. We want to try to avoid that. So how do we do that? Okay, so you can see I have this procedure that I've created. It's called is valid emp and it takes in a subset of the employee record. It doesn't take doesn't take in everything. Um, and the other thing that it takes in is an array. Uh, and I'll talk about why this is so helpful uh, in a little bit. In this procedure, what I have done is I'm just checking certain things. So uh, I'm checking whether or not a record exists uh, that has the exact same employee name, uh, but I need to make sure that it's not the record that I'm currently editing. In other words, if I click save, I should ignore my uh, current record. Uh, if there is, and I understand that unique constraint on ename is a silly thing. It's just a contrived example uh, for this. So what I'm going to do, if I get a hit on this, then what I'm going to, I'm going to call apex error dot add error. And I'm going to provide the message that I'd like to use. I'm going to, the display location, I'd like to have it display in line. Uh, in other words, next to the field and also in up at the top in the notification. And notice that this kind of weird thing here is happening. So basically what's happening is I'm providing an array of item names. And the E name position is gonna be the first item name. So what this is doing is this allows me to also pass in the items where I would like to display this error message. You don't have to do this if you, do, if you don't want. Uh, we could rewrite this a little bit to, to ignore that if there's no value. Um, but uh, it is very helpful to make sure that you kind of uh, get the error message displayed where it needs to be. And also you can see I'm checking for salary and I'm checking to make sure that only salesmen can have a commission. So what does, this, what does this look like in the application? You can see here, I have a simple form. I have a name, salary, and commission. And what's gonna happen here is, um, let's actually just take a look at the uh, validations that I have and where exactly, the, where they are exactly. So you can see that I have some validations here. I have validate emp and I have a commission within limit. And notice that both of these are in the validation section, but let's actually take a look at this validation and see what it looks like. And it's gonna look a little bit strange. So 
So what's happening here is I'm calling is valid emp, and then I'm always returning true. And I understand that this seems really silly, but it's for a good reason. So the reason why I decided to call this function uh, from within a validation and not just to call this from my processing, either before validations or after validations in the main processing section, is that if I was to do this before validations, uh, it actually, I, I, I wouldn't actually get to my validations or my other normal validations. And if I was to do this in my processing, it's too late. Processing has already started and it will not um, stop further processing from happening. In other words, I'd have to make this much more sophisticated in terms of knowing how to stop the Apex engine and redirecting to the right location and, and lots of things that I just don't want to have to deal with here. I'd rather just invoke this uh, from the validation section and kind of let the framework kind of resolve what should happen uh, when there is an error that has been raised. The other thing that I want to point out is notice that I'm providing an array here of items, name, sal, job, and commission. And I've seen uh, similar implementations to this before, where um, inside of this validation logic, instead of you know directly referencing the item, you know I'll see something like this where it'll say um, you know app, oops, app page ID, you know kind of concatenate like this. Um, but what this assumes is that the item always has the exact same name, and sometimes you don't. Uh, sometimes you'll have a display item and a return item of some sort, in, in which case uh, I like having the flexibility of passing an ename one way, but then changing where exactly I want the corresponding error messages for this value to display. In this case, they're both the same place, but that's not always true. So let's actually see these errors in practice. So uh, if I go in and I, I'll enter Blake, and I'll also enter a very high salary. And I'm going to go ahead and add a commission that uh, is too high. And I'll go ahead and say apply changes. At the moment, um, I only get this commission validation that's firing. Um, and for good reason, um, I commented out my, uh, my validation. So let me go back one second and uncomment it out. And I just want to show you, this has nothing to do with messages, but just something that I do for in applications that I build. Um, one thing that I have, what, that I like to do in my apps is I make a build option and I call it is commented out. Uh, and the reason why I like to do this is many times the server side condition is a critical part of the component functioning properly. And I don't like having to set server side uh, condition to never uh, to uh, prevent a component from taking action. Uh, I, I think that's a, that's not a complete anti-pattern, but um, it definitely will. Uh, there are more often than, or there are many times where I'll be losing information when I uh, change the server-side condition to never. Some ways to get around this is to comment, is to copy the condition down into the comment. I just don't like doing that. Just make a build option that excludes whatever it, uh, is using it. So let's try this again. So I'm currently entering the, uh, editing the King record. So I'll say Blake, I'll set it to a very high salary and also a commission that is too high. You can see that several errors were caught uh, this name already exists, and uh, I know that the salary is too high. Uh, there is one issue that happened here. Unfortunately, I had two error messages that were both associated with commission, so the last one's going to display. Um, I think that's totally fine. It's, uh, it is what it is. At least we always we did catch the error message, and I can click on this uh, to uh, take me uh, to the, the field to correct the issue. So what did we learn there? Um, so one error message uh, 
equals one validation message. And you, the question you also might have is, well, why wouldn't I just define my validation messages on the page? Why go through that hassle? Well, it's very likely that I'm gonna have another form somewhere else that is in Apex that needs to make sure that EMP adheres to those rules. It's very likely that I'm gonna have similar forms uh, in one form or another throughout my applications. And I wanna make sure that the rules, the validation rules that I'm using are consistent. 